What I'm about to say may sound hard to believe, given they've been blown out by the Boston Celtics recently, they'd lost to the Clippers, and have been somewhat inconsistent over the first half of the year, having just blown a 19-point lead down the stretch in a double overtime thriller against LA, but ultimately hanging on. I'm here to tell you the Dallas Mavericks have as good a shot as any team to win the 2023 championship. That is, if Luka's both embarrassing the NBA competition and passing out of blitzes in the pick and roll, like he is right now. Another key displayed on this lob pass, which gave Doncic his 10th triple-double of the year, the chemistry of Doncic and Wood has to be on point. Along with Luka responding to the advanced coverages better than he did in last year's conference finals, Jason Kidd's offense needs to be playing with a bit more pace as this team ranks 30th in the league for the second straight year in terms of speed. Spencer Dinwiddie needs to be hitting back end of the shot clock step back bombs under pressure like this or just generally trusting his scoring instincts so Doncic doesn't have to do all the creating off the dribble. Dinwiddie did just that in the dramatic W in the City of Angels as he threw down two posters in the win against the feisty Lakers. That said, there's not as much pressure on the secondary playmakers or scores like Dinwiddie, Bullock, or Tim Hardaway Jr., among others, because this season, the Mavs have Christian Wood, who can hit spot-up bombs in traffic, plus fade away from the high post. The Mavericks' record against the other top four teams in the West is the best among those teams in said matchups, as against Denver, Sacramento, New Orleans, and the team we talked about yesterday in Memphis, Dallas has a record of 4-2. Since starting 15-16, and 16, the Mavs have won 9 of their last 12 games. It remains to be seen how Dorian Finney-Smith will fit in once he returns to action. Dodo's been out since December 19th with a hip injury. That said, getting a crucial Draymond Green archetype back in DFS should help this team's flow on both ends of the court. They need Finney Smith healthy if another run, at least to the conference finals, is going to happen. You can't forget about the University of Arizona product, Josh Green. He's also been out. Man's a valued wing who can lock up the perimeter and hit threes at an elite clip. But there's a reason I predicted this Mavericks team would finish first in the Western Conference way back in my standings prediction video before the season. Christian Woods, an elite two-way stretch big when everything's flowing in terms of his fit within the offense. Early in the year, he wasn't providing the production we all expected him to, but once Jason Kidd finally came to the seemingly simple realization that Woods should be starting, the Mavericks have turned around their season. Woods coming off a monster game against LA, where he viciously swatted five shots, including this game-saving pin to the backboard against LeBron in the clutch. In the intro, I mentioned Dallas has the best record against the top five teams in the West among the top five teams. While the Lakers may not be close to being a top five team out West, they've been playing a lot better as of late. Of course, LeBron's still a top 10 player at the very least. I'm a big fan of rookie Max Christie. The product of Michigan State isn't afraid of anything after playing under legend coach Tom Izzo in college. Not only Braun and Christie, but the length and engagement of the Lakers' solid front court rotation with Thomas Bryant, who's been a beast as of late, along with Troy Brown Jr. and Wenyon Gabriel, who both have seven foot plus wingspans. The Lakers were making it extremely difficult on Luka, and they made a massive run down the stretch. Russ was even rocking the baby, hitting triples like the MVP version of himself. Then things got dicey when Russ would get a flagrant for running into Luka, and Doncic took exception. Good to see them settle the beef though. LA forced double OT, but just when it seemed like the same trap Doncic and let everyone else beat you scheme was going to work against Dallas yet again, Doncic came through with daggers in the clutch like the superstar he is. The wizardry and craftiness, whether with his unbelievable step back shooting or his foul drawing, despite an outstanding, grueling effort from King James and company, gave this Dallas squad the last laugh. Darvin Ham laid out the blueprint to stop Luka in terms of how they trapped every pick and roll, but I thought the reads Luka made displayed an impressive and more importantly improved calm, cool, and collectedness to figure things out. As LeBron blitzes on the strong side right here, while Luka or his teammates may have been overwhelmed with this coverage last year, Doncic calmly threads Braun and Gabriel for the nifty bounce pass into the lane, and C. Woods the difference this year as he makes the perfect cut right after Luka's doubled, faking the floater with a one-dribble lane entry to take Russ out of the equation before whipping an over-the-head no-looker to Powell. Here, Thomas Bryant's going to bring help on the baseline, Christie seemingly cuts off the passing lane to both Wood and Hardaway, but Luka just dribbles in once, 
Timmy relocates and watch the beautiful weaving one-handed baseball pass to bounce it right through Max and find Hardaway Jr. right in his pocket. The Lakers would keep Luka scoreless for 17 straight minutes in the second half, and after getting blitzed yet again in this high pick and roll, he laces a mid-air floater pass over the outstretched arms of Gabriel, but not far enough that it reaches TBJ. Just beautiful placement, good tap to himself and finish from Powell. Doncic was forced to give it up on every possession down the stretch. However, with 12 seconds remaining and the Mavs down three, Jason Kidd smartly has Luka inbound the ball as that's the best way for him to get it back. And for some reason, after the nice handoff action with Dinwiddie following the SLOB, the Lakers just leave him on an island with the smaller Dennis Schroeder. Luka puts his eyes on the basket and elusively drives to fake the attempt for a quick two. He breaks Schroeder's ankles with the crossover, but Dennis is still right there to contest, yet Luka's 27-foot bomb off the bounce falls through. This man's just got a once-in-a-lifetime blend of skill, shooting balance, and poise. Lakers were down three again in OT, but more ice in Luka's veins allow him to lock in for another slight drive in an isolation, this time with the much bigger TBJ on him, but this time he whips out a moving jab step to create space for the game-tying bomb. Ultimately, it was good to see the key supporting cast members of this Dallas team maintain their aggression and confidence when things got dicey under pressure. Gotta hand it to Seawood, Spencer, Reggie, Dwight. There were several questionable calls down the stretch, and I thought the Los Angeles Lakers played good enough to win, which even further speaks to how hard fought of a W it was for Dallas. LA's been playing a lot better lately, but where's Dallas finishing in the West and why? Two commenter shoutouts for my last upload and this one next time around. 